I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. I'm really happy tonight to introduce Andrea Guernsey. Appreciate Hi. you coming and sharing your story. Lovely young lady, and I, she's got a very interesting story. You were actually born in the church, right? I was. Yeah, and yeah. baptized at eight. Baptized at eight. Were your parents active? My mother was always active. My dad um, was kind of the black sheep of his family, not always the most active. Yeah, my um, mom was active. But my mom always was. And yeah. brothers and sisters, did you? Yeah, have? Um, my brother went on a mission, my sister, um, is active, still active. Yeah. Yeah. And did you uh, like go to seminary and? I went to seminary. I graduated from seminary. Did you? And um, served in the young women's, like when I was a beehive and. Oh, you did. Mm-hmm. So you and went to camp, youth camps, and yep. that kind of stuff. Yep. Did you ever bear your testimony around the campfire and? You know, I wasn't much of a testimony bearer. <laughs> yeah, wasn't. <laughs> if I did, it was probably pretty short and. Yeah. But. But did you ever think that the church wasn't true? Was that ever anything that crossed your mind at that point? Um, no, not at that point. No. Yeah. yeah. So just active and busy in the church and mm -hmm. growing up. Just a up good little Mormon girl. <laughs> good little Mormon girl. <laughs> yep. So what happens after high school? Any were you able to? transitioned into young adult, okay? And yeah, um, after high school, I went up to the U and I was still pretty active. Um, I even threw around going on a mission. I, that was one of my yeah. goals. And then um, I just got into school and decided That's not to not pursue to that. Yeah. But and were you, did you remain active then? Is it, yeah, yeah. I, up until, you know, early 20s, I kind of just, as my friends started to get married one by one, <laughs> and I got older, I kind of just started to um, become a little less active. I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, completely stop believing it, but. Yeah, did your mom and dad say anything about that, or were they um, upset about that, or your mom at least, I guess? You know, my mom <laughs> probably was. She's not very um, vocal about, she kind of just silently probably was disapproving, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know it, sometimes it, it is a, a hard transition for young women, especially where young boys maybe go, do go on missions, but to, to leave after you leave high school, it's, well, do I go to Relief Society? I can't go to young women anymore, and yeah. where do I fit in? I think that's... Yeah, and I was feeling like, really you know, seeing all my friends get married in the temple, and yeah. I got my patriarchal blessing, and I was just kind of feeling that pressure, and what's wrong with me and why am I not getting married and so you um, got a patriarchal blessing tell mm -hmm. us about that a little bit for the viewers that might not know that um, how old were you when you got that I was 19 oh when I got that and um, I was actually pretty nervous to get it just because it's almost like I was scared to find out what it was going to say about my future and you we know we really put faith in those don't mm -hmm. don't we I oh, mean yeah. we believe that they are God's words to, yeah. to us. So I was afraid, what if it says go on a mission and I didn't want to, or, you know, yeah. 
So, but I ended up getting it, and at that point in my life where I was really needing direction, I kind of clung to it. Yeah. And it meant a lot to me. Yeah. At that point. Well, I, I know it's really hard to even talk about because they are supposed or are supposed to be personal, and again, words from God. But uh, of course, we have probably a little different perspective about them now. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't we? Mm -hmm. But uh, so then, what happens in life? Um, well, <laughs> I, so at age 28 is when I finally got married in the temple. Oh, you did get married in the temple? Mm -hmm. Okay. Salt Lake Temple or? Um, actually the San Diego Temple. Oh. We were trying to do something fun and had this California wedding. Yeah. And, and now your husband was a return missionary or Yeah, he? he went on a mission and yeah, he fit the goal? description of what was in my patriarchal blessing, yeah. you know, and it's funny how that influenced that decision and, you know, it was who I was supposed to marry you and what I was supposed to do, yeah. you know. And that you were 28, you say? 28, which is late for Mormon for standards. For Mormon, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Did you feel pressure then to mm -hmm. kind of? Yeah, and mm -hmm. I want. I did desperately like want. I wanted to start a family and yeah. have that life. So and looking back, then do you? Th well, now I guess we should explain. You you actually how um, married in the San Diego Temple. Then then what happens? I guess. Yeah, and okay. Well, <laughs> so when I first went through, I went through in the um, Jordan River Temple. Like oh yeah, I don't know if it was a week before, or a month before. Um, I got sealed, and that was a pivotal moment for me as far as right. my faith, because um, the night before I went through, I did the most sincere prayer to God, because I had heard things about the temple and that, you know, it was kind of strange, and I didn't take any, like, temple prep classes. I had no idea what you really what I was getting into. Just well, that, they're not allowed to talk about, right. about it, so... so Anyway, just this heartfelt prayer, and I just asked God, like, even if I don't understand it, just l please let me feel your spirit and know yeah. that it's true. So I went through, um, my mom took me through, you know, and had some family there, and it was so strange to me, like, and I just, I got this, it was this bad feeling, like, oh. I was searching for, you know, the burning in your bosom, warm, fuzzy <laughs> feeling, and I got this opposite, awful feeling. Wow. And I couldn't, it was hard for me to sit through the whole thing and go along with it. Wow. And my family could tell, like we went to dinner after, and like, I, it was like, kind of traumatizing. Like I what was- What did I just do? Yeah. Huh? And I remember my ex-husband kind of dragged me up into the prayer circle and you know, I didn't know what was going on. It was like, it was pretty awful. Well, I've heard, we've heard other people that have gone through the temple for the first time and then the washing and anointing and all the things that go on there. And it is, it's very strange. And I guess thinking about the Book of Mormon, you know, when we're asked to pray about the Book of Mormon, what if a person does pray and doesn't get, the, doesn't get an answer? Uh, the problem is always with the person. Yes, right? exactly. So the same thing with the temple, don't you? you almost yes, feel like I felt like I was being looked at, like, oh, well, you're not spiritual, and that's why I like internalized it. Like, there's something wrong with me. Yeah. Like, why is everyone else here, you know, just going along with it? And I'm like severely disturbed by what <laughs> just happened. So, yeah. You know, someone said something about uh, taking oaths for dead people. You know, you're taking it, well now you went through for yourself the first mm -hmm. time, but after that, the, we go through the temple over and over again, it's for people that have died. Mm -hmm. And so we're taking oaths for them. Yeah. It's kind of a strange concept. It is concept. very strange, and, it doesn't make and the any other, sense. The other thing that we, we've heard is that there's a certain amount of occult that's mm. in the temple, the all-seeing eye and some of the other things in the temple. Mm -hmm. Did yeah, you see after that I've researched it? it now, yeah. it's very interesting. And the masonry and, you know, and similarities with that, you can't deny. Yeah, and maybe your spirit was, or God's spirit to you was saying something. That's what I feel like. I feel like he was answering my prayer, you yeah. know, telling me to run. <laughs> and yet 
and yet those that were with you would would say that it's your fault right. that you're not mm -hmm. spiritual enough or exactly. something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you get married and mm -hmm. in San Diego and... Yeah, and so then early married life, um, we actually lived with my in-laws at the time. And so, you know, and they're all very Mormon. And so I kind of just played the role, you know, um, went to church because we were living with them. I think if we had been on our own, we would have... I probably wouldn't have gone. Would, would, he, would your <laughs> husband have gone too? Um, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Like, he's one of those that um, really believes that not necessarily, even if he's not active, he's still like, you know, no, got his heels dug in pretty yeah. deep, so. So what happens after this? Um, so um, we eventually moved out of my in-laws and in our, so we're in a new ward and we, kind, we weren't real active then and, you know, um, either of us and one night I came across your show oh really yeah and well my husband or ex-husband was had the remote and we stopped it there and we were both watching it for a couple minutes and then he was like oh this is dumb you know and yeah. changed the channel but then me I was like secretly like that's actually interesting <laughs> you know and so here's a former bishop interviewing people that have yeah, left the church. You yeah, know? I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not alone here, you know. And so he ended up going out of town a couple weeks later, and I looked it up online. Yeah. And just um, that was the start of it all. I just um, yeah, and I saw you, and not. I hope this isn't offensive, but I saw you like this typical Mormon. <laughs> bishop, you know, figure, yeah. and I'm like, what made him yeah. leave the church? And I ended up looking up your story and how you looked at the different versions of the, or you yeah. read the original the Book of Mormon, and yeah. so, yeah, that just started me on my quest for information. And, and things that you'd maybe thought about before, all, all of a sudden you started learning about, yeah. I guess. And mm -hmm. Did you start studying a little bit? Yeah. And learning? Uh-huh. And it's like polygamy, I knew, you know, that Joseph, well, I knew Brigham Young was a polygamist, but not that Joseph Smith was. Was that shocking to learn so that? So shocking. Yeah. It's amazing what was kept hidden. Yeah. You know? Well, and they would say, well, it's not hidden, it's there, but they never talk about oh, it. Oh, no way. I, I'd never heard that Joseph Smith married 14 and 15 yeah. year olds. And other men's wives. Yeah, can you believe that? I had never heard of yeah. either. Women that were already, 11 of them. It wasn't like, mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah, crazy. And it, so it's funny to me that people in the church will justify, well, he was just a man and he's, men aren't perfect, yeah. you know? But to me, I'm like, that's more than just not being perfect. Like that is evil, like yeah, to me, like that is not, <laughs> you know, all the things I learned about him just yeah. did not. So did you share any of these thoughts eventually with your husband? And I did, and he was not receptive not at really all. Not at all. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yep, and so, yeah, we'd have been having some other problems, and that was just kind of one more thing to add on. And um, yeah, so ended up divorcing eventually. And um, do you feel like you you mentioned this just a little bit, but maybe being pressured into getting to the temple, getting married, and maybe not yeah, enough time? Yeah. So, and that was a tough decision something. because I did transition right into Christianity, and so you know, and I know the Bible like teaches, you know, you shouldn't divorce and that's yeah. bad and wrong. So I had this conflict of, you know, it was really a hard decision. Yeah. Um, well, wh speaking of the Bible, what did you think of Jesus at, at, as a Mormon? What? Um, I always believed in Jesus. I just, because I feel like, you know, there are bits of truth woven into Mormonism amongst all the stuff Joseph Smith introduced, but um, so I feel like I probably clung to those little bits and pieces. Yeah. I definitely always believed in Jesus. So once I learned, you know, the nature, true nature of God that the Bible teaches that he was God and he came down in the flesh, like that just clicked for me and made so much more sense and <laughs> yeah.
And did, had you been reading the Bible before then, or was um, it something no. you'd ever, no? No, Even I mean. Even in seminary, you don't really. It, yeah, little scripture mastery verses. Right. And I remember having the goal once to go through it, starting with the Old Testament and only got th through part of Genesis. So yeah. <laughs> that's as far as I ever went. I think most of the stories anybody knows out of the Bible probably are in Genesis, aren't they? The mm -hmm. Book of Abraham, or uh, story of Abraham and the Egypt mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And yeah. The, and the flood and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's about all the Mormons know about their Bible. Or, yeah. Or at least that. that yeah, part so of it. it was really crazy to see the Book of Mormon and the Bible and just how they contradict each other. Yeah. And so no wonder they don't, you know, yeah. examine it in more depth. Well, was there any other problems that you had with, with Mormonism that uh, kind of kept leading you out? Yes, I always, so I always had problems with um, the pre-existence. Oh. Um, just, you know, because the Mormons view themselves as this chosen people that we were righteous in the pre-existence and that's why we came into these righteous homes and families, yeah. you know, yeah. as a blessing. Yeah. And to me, I, it just, I couldn't see myself as any better than someone you know, in a war-torn, third world country, you know, it just didn't make sense to me. God loves them too. Yes, yeah. yeah. And it's funny too that the church proclaims itself to be the only true church, so this, just this little group of people are the only ones that God's going to accept. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I'm sure they, they would say that there's a lot of missionary work left to do, but uh, mm -hmm. it is kind of a funny little concept, isn't it, that, yeah. that we're the chosen ones. And yeah. it gives you a lot of pride, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Did you notice that? Yes, that um, fosters pride. And then even the patriarchal blessing, that's kind of how I view it now. It's like this way to like, it makes you kind of prideful about yourself and what you're going to accomplish in life. And you know, it doesn't it though? It makes you and judgmental too. Yeah. For, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and then guilt. Mm -hmm. you, know, you feel guilty when you're not doing everything you're supposed to. Yeah, and that was a big mind shift for me was um, when I, because that's how I used to view God in this negative way, like I just wasn't good enough, you know, like I wasn't fulfilling all of my duties as the, a Mormon like I should. And so whenever anything would go wrong in my life, I would feel like, you know, it's because God's, God's punishing me, <laughs> which is so opposite. So yeah, once I, you know, um, learned about grace and just His love and that God is love, like, yeah. it's just so different. Well, did you have a moment that, that you really feel like, okay, now I'm, now my eyes are open? <laughs> what? Yeah, so I, after I did all my research um, and was finding all this information out, I just remember getting down on my knees and praying and I um, just asked God like is this what you've been trying to tell me because I had would ha had doubts you know throughout my life and yeah. I didn't know why and yeah. so I just asked him and I got this like resounding clear yes answer and then just felt this like weight lifted off of me and really yeah and it was like I, re I know um, Sean explains it as it's more you see things more clearly Maybe. instead of just feeling that feeling, you know, yeah. that they stress Your in eyes Mormonism. Are open and yeah, it was like everything made sense and yeah, yeah, and we never amazing. we never felt that way. And I mean, there's a uh, Jesus says my bird my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you, mm -hmm. you feel that? Yeah, now. and it's like I'd read that before, but it's like I finally understand that. That's what that but, means. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, it makes sense now. Yeah. And the Bible, do you? I love the Bible, yeah, like, um, it's just like that verse, there's so many verses like that where it's like, it's so new now, it's like, it all yeah. makes sense and it's so simple, like, you know? Yeah, and we, we mentioned grace, but did, have you, did you ever understand that as a Latter-day Saint? Never. Because you were working your little... Yeah, I just always to, feel like I never measured up, you know? Yeah. And so. it was all based on what you were 
done recently, really. I mean, mm -hmm. you, don't you feel like it was kind of climbing the ladder? And yeah, you and you would always back? like, I hope I'll make it to heaven. You know, I hope I'm doing enough. Yeah. But you never had that surety, like, yeah. that, you know, So was that grace. A, quite a special moment when you finally felt like, was that like an aha, okay? Oh, oh yeah, very, like, liberating and, yeah. yeah. So and by great. then, were you divorced, or was this... Uh, no, I was still married at that time. Mm -hmm. And did you and share this with your husband and just said, I, there's things you don't know about the church? Did mm -hmm. you share that? And I did. Again, and he wasn't interested in... Yeah. Oh, shoot. He would kind of listen, and but it was kind of like talking to a brick wall. Yeah. He just, he knew, and he, he didn't want to know. I think. Well, I think it's hard to, you said he was a return missionary, and I think there is a pride there too, mm -hmm. don't you think? I did see that because I would bring things up and he would say, and it's true that at that point I wasn't very well studied as a Christian, you right. know, so it was hard for me to like have any kind of intelligent debate with him. Yeah. And he did feel like, I've been on a mission and I know this better than you. And I know, you know what I mean? It was kind of that attitude. I could see myself doing that same thing. Like, yeah. I may not have said it out yeah. loud, but I, my thought would have been, you really don't have anything to share with me. You're, yeah, and that's what I'm I, a return missionary or mm -hmm. I've studied. And yeah. So you felt that, huh? Yeah. A little bit. Well, did you ever talk to any leaders or anything about some of your concerns, a bishop or? Ever I never heaven? did. No, yeah. like I, I talked to my mom once about the preexistence. Yeah, what she say? And I never tried to bring them things up too much. I just didn't want to like yeah. um, cause much contention. But um, so I'd kind of just listen, you know, to her response. But she tried to just explain it that it's not what we're doing now. Like we're not any better than anyone else. It's just what we did in the in the pre-life that got us here, and you know, so she We've was, earned our own way here. Yeah, and even like that explanation, I was just yeah. like, no, that still doesn't, you know, appease me. That doesn't yeah. make sense. Now I know you go to a church called Capital. Is uh -huh. that in the Capital area? It's on um, what is it, Seventh South and Tenth East, I believe. Tell us yeah. about that a little bit. Do they have music and a, they, they have music, they a they band, teach out of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like you're worshiping a church or Jesus? Not at all. <laughs> it's completely about Jesus and um, yeah, it's so different than any Mormon church service. Tell me about the first time you walked in there. Uh, did you? Well, the first time I went there, I actually went with um, some of my former bosses. But when I was still Mormon, they took me there. Really? Yeah. Well, they were, they were Mormon or they were Christian? So I, they were Christian and okay. I was still Mormon. And so this is was one of the things shocking? looking back where I'm like, God was trying to speak to me then, you yeah, know? Yeah. And and I ended up going, you know, I was, you know, open minded and they really were, you know, trying to encourage me and yeah. show me. Was it shocking to, to sing the songs? It was very uncomfortable for me at that time. It was a so music, foreign. A band or yeah, something. and people were clapping and, you know, it was very different and yeah. I felt out of place and you know, now I can see it's just because of that's, I was raised, just because you're comfortable with something doesn't make it true. Your arms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the um, message, was it, uh, what, what did you hear there? Um, you know, when I went the first time, I don't really remember, because I just remember it was kind of new and strange. Yeah. But when I, you know, years later now, when I've gone back, it was completely different, and I just felt yeah. so much peace and right at home and and the girls do they like to go my kids yeah, yeah or they, the kids i'm sorry yeah Is girl a and a boy but yeah, they and... love it yeah yeah they have a great kids ministry and they enjoy going and mm -hmm. see that's one thing i think most mormons don't really appreciate the fact that christians have a heart for of course for god and jesus but they have programs and yeah yeah i think that's what have you people, learned with that um I didn't know much about that either, and I think people are scared to lose that structure and organization and convenience, you know, the uh, social aspect of being in the church. Yeah. And um, so I think that's, but you, you know, can it can be it. scary, but it's there, yeah. Yeah. And to, to really worship God is so different. And, you know, I, I 
would have thought as an, a Latter-day Saint, of course we've only been out for three years ourselves, but um, that it would get boring. Mm -hmm. But it sure hasn't got boring yet. It's so and crazy. It's like stuff. I look forward to it every week. Yeah. It's, it's so different. Like I like want to go. I get like so sad if I can't go for some reason. You yeah. know, it's there's no obligation. It's not like you feel like you have to or you should. It's that you really, really want to. And do you have the attitude? Uh, I know we joke about this, but you can eat, drink, and be merry, and do all you want because you've been saved by grace and faith <coughs> alone in Christ. You it know, just doesn't compute, does no. it? No. Yeah, it's you. You want to please God, and so yeah. that's your focus. That's what it becomes. So you're not out there partying. <laughs> no. Yeah. And and doing things that. I'm, I'm yeah, it's sure. just a freedom. It's like you know you're not perfect. So, I mean, it's not that now I'm like trying to be perfect. It's I just accept that I'm not. And in that comes such this yeah. freedom and ease, you know. And it's such a subtle little difference, I guess. I mean, it hit me square in the face, so uh -huh. it wasn't so subtle. But it's still just a little different thinking. That mm -hmm. It's not all about us. And like yeah. you said about the patriarchal blessing and earning yeah. our own way. Taking the focus off yourself yeah. and your problems in your world and onto others, which Jesus taught, like, you know, first you believe in God and then you um, love others. And yeah. yeah, it's so simple little formula. Simple it's really so quite godlike yeah. in a way. I've thought about it that way is that what would God have us do? Would he have us go through rituals and ceremonies and everything, or would he have this simple faith in his son and, and his gift to us? Well, okay. you've got just a 30, 40 seconds. What would you okay. tell the Latter-day Saints? You know, um, I would just say don't be complacent. Like, I know a lot of friends and family who have the idea that, you know, it's not a bad way of life and, you know, God will, you know, even if it's not true, God won't judge us because we're living yeah. a good, righteous life. Yeah. But, you know, it makes me think of in the Bible, um, Jesus said, don't be lukewarm. You should be hot or cold. Hot or like cold. you should have, yeah. you should believe in what you're well, Andrea, thanks so okay. much. Appreciate you sharing. Our time's all, all, all okay. of a sudden gone, <laughs> but a wonderful story. And we appreciate you joining us tonight. We'll see you next week.